We do have uh, Craig Button joining us for Pro-Am Sports. They've got signings at a deadline today with Ethan Morrill. And then they've also got signings locked and loaded with Vincent DeHarnay. And Ryan Smith. More info on that at www.proamsports.ca. Let's bring in Craig Button this morning. Oilers and Jets living up to the hype yesterday, Craig. There's no doubt about that. That was a fun hockey game from start to finish. Two teams that, uh, you know, would come in uh, a little bit wobbly, shall I say. And now Mm -hmm. you look at the Jets, they've lost four in a row. You know, the Oilers didn't want to get into that space. And after they blew the 3-1 lead blew it i mean you got to give the other team credit after they surrendered the 3-1 lead you know hyman again i mean just an unbelievable play to, to win the game but it, but it is a good game by two really good teams and certainly you know the questions will be asked in winnipeg today and tomorrow because they got vegas on thursday it doesn't get any easier now for the uh winnipeg jets and you know we saw them last year run into this little not a little a big bump on the road they want to make sure that this stays a little bump in the road because Nashville right now is hot on their heels, four points behind, and they play each other one more time. Ooh. Craig, I see you're in your uh, Michigan yellow here. Uh, Zach Hyman, obviously a fellow alumnus of yours. Let's, I know we'll probably get back to the game. Can but we just, just stop right there, Lieutenant Eric? What? Like, we got to stop right there. Maze. It's Maze, and blue. Maze and blue. <laughs> Maze. Maze and blue. Maze and blue. My bad. <laughs> you don't want to be yellow. You're a national champion. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah. When you said stop right there, I was like, uh-oh. What's He's going to talk about Hyman and his work ethic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we haven't talked to you since he hit 50. Um, your thoughts on Hyman, his work ethic, hitting 51 in overtime, um, given some of the videos out there on the internet that were circulating yesterday. Uh, just your thoughts as a former Wolverine, him getting to this point. You know, it's amazing. I, I've watched Zach play since he was uh, 17 years of age, 16 years of age. And his, his progression, it, it took him time. It took him a, a lot of time to find his way. At the University of Michigan, it wasn't until the second half of his third year, his junior season, that he really started to show some offensive capabilities. The next year, he was phenomenal as yeah. a senior and was a Hobie Baker finalist and and, and, and certainly established a, a level of a, a standard of a game that was really quite impressive. And then and then what he ends up ends up being able to do is just take that into the NHL. And, and to me, I'm seeing a very similar t- kind of progression. You know, you know, first little stretch in the NHL, good player, you know, does a lot of positive things. Then now he, he ends up in Edmonton and certainly, you know, you look at what he's done since he got to Edmonton, he's been beyond terrific. And, and the 51 goals now, it's it, it just another sign of, of somebody that continues to take his game up different levels he, he's a great example of a player you can keep growing in your game you don't we want players to do it at 22 and 24 right away sometimes it takes players a little bit longer and certainly with Zach Hyman what he's been able to do since he signed in Edmonton it, it's not only impressive it, 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 the admiration that I think the Edmonton Oilers fans have for Zach Hyman, I mean, the way he plays the game, I, and, and you saw how humble he was after it was just thanks, thanks, thanks. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks, after thanks. the goal. <laughs> thanks, 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 thanks. And 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 I, I think the appreciation that his teammates and everybody has for him is is well deserved and certainly an important player. It goes without saying, an important player for the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, Craig, it's funny you you bring up that time in Michigan because when we when he got to fifty, we were going through like his progression, and I I said that morning I was like I have to know what happened between his third season and his fourth season in Michigan because he just blew up. You said it kind of took midway through that third season. It kind of started to click. Was it his skating? Like, was it opportunity? How all of a sudden did he blow up on the scene in that fourth year in Michigan? Well, I think I think it was all those things, Dustin. I think that I, th- I think there was opportunity. I think it was maturity. I think he he understood that, like, hey, I'm capable of doing more, and, and on the offensive side of things. When, whenever you watch Zach, there was never a lack of uh, of effort and determination, and 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 that certainly is on display every single shift that he plays. But, but his confidence grew and, and certainly given opportunity. And it, it's funny, I say this now because of the portal in the NCAA. He, he could be a player now that might leave after a second year and go somewhere else because he doesn't think that he's, uh, you know, that he might need a, another place. Him, him being able to stick it out in, in Michigan, I, I, I think was a real springboard for the success that he's had uh, now in the NHL. 
NHL analyst Craig Button with us on the show this morning. As far as that game goes last night, you did mention give Winnipeg some credit. The others are up 3-1 with 13 minutes left to go and had to end up winning it in overtime. So maybe some positives to take away from this game for the Jets. But where do you think that Winnipeg team is at right now? And like I said, I said this morning we were breaking down the show in the 6 o'clock hour. Tyler Toffoli was kind of unnoticeable last night. And I know he's been great since they added him. So where's things at right now with the Jets? Well, I think there's got to be concern. Listen, I, just give me one second, guys. I just got to answer my door. Okay. Oh, he actually is going exciting. to he's going to answer his door. The door. You know what I'm going to guess? I'm going to guess it was somebody coming by. Like, man, it's 7, 10 in the morning. I was going to say maybe it was somebody coming by to try to sell sell him uh, solar paneling. For I'm going to say an arborist. Do you oh, need okay. your trees well, let's, trimmed? Let's, uh, find yeah. out. let's bring, Craig Button, uh, Tree let's bring Craig Button back in here. Craig, uh, who was trying to sell you something? What's going on? I'm, I'm in Denver. Uh, excuse me. I'm, I'm in Denver. I was in the uh, Montreal. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was doing the Denver, uh, the Colorado uh, Montreal game with somebody at my hotel door. So, sorry about that. Now I got a frog in my throat. <laughs> Holy jeez! What, what a day! Right. What a day! Uh, no, we were talking just about Winnipeg and where they're at right now. Like yeah. D- Dallas is kind of Dallas has separated themselves a bit from Winnipeg, not Colorado. And Nashville's kind of knocking on the door here. So what do you expect from Winnipeg down the stretch? Yeah, and that's the that's the thing right now. You know, they, it was a good game last night. They, they Certainly, you know, they got to feel good about getting one point. But now the, the road ahead is not going to be easy for the Winnipeg Jets. And what, what I see in the Jets is when they play a game that, that where they really commit to a strong defensive effort, I'm talking about committing, they're they're a team that's almost unbeatable, but they get away from it. And 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 it was the same thing that I saw last year. They get away for get away from from it for ten minutes, and it was enough to hurt them. And this year they've been one of the best defensive teams in the league. And like I said, when when they're committed to that defensive team, they're almost unbeatable. But when they get away from it and 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 they start to uh, you know drift a little bit and not really dig in, and that's what playoff hockey is about. It's about digging in and and really saying, "I'm going to win this battle. I'm going to win this puck fight. I'm going to be in the right position. Somebody's not going to get an edge on me." They, they slip for stretches, and it just seems those stretches really hurt them. They, they were playing the Islanders on Saturday, I believe. They got they got obliterated. But they're pushing the game. They're pushing the game. All of a sudden, Cal Clutterbuck scores on a off a faceoff, and and then it just it went downhill from there for about the next ten minutes. And then they they play, but it was too late. And and that's what they have to guard against. And when you when you have a Vegas team that blew a three goal lead <laughs> against Nashville, they're not coming into Winnipeg with any uh, with any other idea than to try to end their own hurt. So it's going to be challenging, but I think it's it, it's just digging in hard like they do when they have success on the defensive side. Well, Craig, and and just going on this theme from the Jets uh, to the Preds, and if I if I didn't know my college sports, uh, seeing you in that yellow shirt, I would have thought maybe that <laughs> yeah. you're a Preds fan or something like that. I mean, the what what they did last night. I mean, that game against Vegas. You know, the storylines and everything coming coming from behind, extending that point streak. Um, are they going to lose again? Like what, what? Give me your thoughts on the Preds heading into the stretch run, and how noisy can they be in a postseason? I think really noisy. And when you look at their team, you know, you watch the Washington Capitals right now. Goaltending has been outstanding. The power play has been really good. You know, obviously when Ovechkin starts to heat up, that's going to give you a little bit uh, more opportunity to win games. But when the Nashville Predators, you look at every single area of the game, every single goaltending, defense, offense, power play, penalty killing, everything has been outstanding. So there's no area of their game where they're where they're they're trying to have it propped up from some other area of their game. I, I said yesterday on Vancouver, I think it was Vancouver Radio, if the, I think the Vancouver was going to play Nashville if the playoffs began yesterday, I would have picked I would pick Nashville yesterday to beat Vancouver. I think that they could be this year's Florida. Wow. So you don't want to play them along the way with the way that it's kind of coming to you. Well, we we talked about Nashville a little bit earlier because they have a franchise goaltender and they have a franchise defenseman. And I mean, if you got those two pieces, Craig, that can carry you a long way with Roman Yossi and UC Soros. Yeah, and Phil Forsberg's having a fantastic a great year, season. forty now. Yeah, you know, you know, Gus Nyquist has gone in there and been a really good player. I, I also believe too 
that Barry Trotz went in there and, and really established a, a, a standard, a, a high bar, and, and Andrews held it up. We, we all know the story now about the U2 trip being canceled and, you know, after they'd lost 9-2 at home to, to the Dallas Stars. But it, it started long before then. That, that was the one that where, where Andrew Burnett said, you know, there's no rewards for – for not digging in and playing hard and, and being being competitive in games. There's no rewards for that. And he's right. But Barry Trotz last summer, he 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 bought out Matt Duchesne. He traded Ryan Johansson. And he just said, you guys don't help us win. And, you know, you're not going to be players. And and I think that that message that he sent, that like high, high price players, not good enough for us. And he needed the support of his ownership, make no mistake about it. But everybody looks around and sees that and goes, okay, this guy's serious. And he was serious. And something that I think really established uh, a, a real mindset in Nashville that's helped him to this point. Craig, before I let you go, you mentioned you're in Denver. What the heck happened last night? Colorado's been so good at home and Montreal Canadiens end up uh, delivering the dub last night. 43 seconds in, McKinnon extends the home streak, and it's like, uh-oh, here yeah. we go. You know, M M Montreal played a really good game in Seattle on Sunday, and you're thinking just – but they score nine seconds later to make it 1-1. And, and, and Montreal, like the game last week in Edmonton, Montreal did not give up the middle of the ice uh, to, to the Colorado Avalanche. They did not let the Avs speed, just like they didn't let the Oilers speed – really overwhelmed them through the middle of the ice. Everything was outside. Montembeau was outstanding, really clean in the net, tidy, no rebounds. And then they get a they, they had some they had some good penalty killing. Their penalty killing, I think it's 16 out of 17 now, or, or 15 out of 16 in their in their last 16 attempts. So you get good goaltending. You, you you don't let the team freewheel and that team and the team here in Colorado can freewheel as good as anybody. Montreal Montreal was full marks and and used this in like he played really well. Montreal had a lot of really good chances. He he played really well for the Avs, but the Avs just couldn't muster up. Uh, and that, they, they had three straight power plays in the game. They had one shot total, and that's McCarr, Tays, Rantanen, <laughs> McKinnon, <laughs> Drouin. It's a pretty good group of five they throw out there. One shot in three consecutive power plays. Craig, as always, man, we appreciate the time. Safe travels wherever you're heading next. I'm heading back to Alberta. All right. Well, safe travels coming home, man. We'll talk to you next week. Thanks.